So I feel like he just kind of escalated a lot from adultery to kidnapping of a child and then grooming question mark so that was that was a lot <laughs> Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and we're at the start of my 24 hour readathon although I'm gonna start this by saying that I'm already cheating. <laughs> I did say in my announcement video that I was going to be starting this at midnight to midnight however that's not happening for two reasons. First of all I'm quite tired uh, so that's not gonna happen and secondly I do live with my family and my mum is working tomorrow and I just feel like me filming at midnight would be really rude especially when they're all trying to sleep like that's just unfair. We're not doing that instead we're starting it at 8 p.m which is oh in a minute so maybe just after 8 p.m uh, and yeah but that's what we're gonna do and like I said I am tired so I am going to be sleeping because I'm just not a person that can go without sleep but I am planning to have at least started a book during that point so let's actually go through the books that I'm going to be reading. So we have The Tale of Genji and this is by Lady Murasaki Shikabi and this fulfills three of my reading prompts already. So I do have four reading prompts for this, the announcement video and everything I've linked below, but to be quite honest, I'm about to run through them. So you don't have to watch that one. First prompt was to read a translated book, which was technically a cheat considering this whole readathon is about reading translated books. So that was already a cheat. So technically three? books. But the second one was to read a book by a female author and the fourth prompt was to read a book with my favourite colour on it. My favourite colour is pink and this is by a female author and obviously it's translated so that already fulfills three out of the four prompts. It's also quite a short book. This is known as the world's earliest novel so I'm really really intrigued to see what this is actually going to be about. Then we have Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux and this obviously fulfills the prompt of translated as well as the third prompt which is to read a book that I've been putting off and as I mentioned in the announcement video this is a book that I don't think I've read but I know the story so well it feels like I've read it so I think now is the time to actually read this one. So those two are for definite however I would really like it if I could also start Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuku Tujimura and this is fulfilling again three prompts it's by a female author of pink on the cover and it is translated clearly. So this is one that I would really like to at least start. I don't think I would finish it. It's quite a big book, especially when I want to read these two, but I would love to start it. This is the book that you guys picked for the month for me to read. I had two different options, but at the same time, I'm also feeling like maybe starting off the readathon with something really quick to make it feel like I've accomplished something. And that is reading A Fairy Tale from The Best Fairy Tales by Hans Christian Andersen. I, I really want to read The Little Mermaid and I know that this will be quite quick. So yeah, I'm also thinking I'm going to squeeze this one in. We're going to read a short story from this, these two books, and potentially start in the big book. Is it going to happen? I guess we're going to find out, but what I am going to be doing first is having a shower. <laughs> Although this time round, I actually have a timer set up on my phone. I should probably stop rambling and putting off starting it and just, just start the clock. 24 hour readathon has started, let's see how it goes. First update of the readathon. We have 21 hours 13 minutes left. It is 10 to 11 at night, so I've popped downstairs to do an update because everyone's in bed. And I'm really enjoying this one. So I started off with The Phantom of the Opera. I am up to chapter 6, page 70, and I'm really enjoying the vibes of this one already. Everything that's going on with the ghost, learning about how everyone has this superstition about him, how some people claim to have seen him and others don't believe it, things that have happened as a result. Then also reading about Christine and Remy and their blossoming romance that has actually stemmed from a past when they knew each other as children, learning about all of that and how Christine believes that she's been visited by the angel of music and that being the ghost of the opera. I'm really liking it. I 
the writing style is really really easy to read and it was really interesting to read the introduction and to find out that Gaston Leroux is like was inspired by Edgar Allan Poe, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle which was amazing and how he actually wrote a murder mystery the first ever one of the first locked room mysteries and it inspired many writers including Agatha Christie so now I need to get that book that is called The Mystery of the Yellow Room if that's inspiring Agatha Christie and I want to read Agatha Christie hello we need to be reading that as well but yeah the writing in this is really really easy to follow it's not difficult like sometimes you can get some classics where the writing takes a moment to get used to this really isn't i am after a bit of a slower start than what i'd hope it took me an hour to even start reading because i had my shower and everything even for the last like 30 minutes or so i've just been sat on my phone scrolling through tiktok and instagram of course but i find myself doing that whenever i'm starting to get tired so i think that's a sign i should just be heading to bed that's what i'm gonna do get an early night and then hopefully be up and bright and early starting tomorrow i think because i did say i wanted to start off with the little mermaid but i'm thinking to save that for tomorrow morning as the first thing i read in the morning i think that'll be a really nice way to start the day but we'll see i could honestly change my mind between now and then i think this is going to be an easy one to finish hopefully i'll be able to fit in tale of genji and everything but we'll see have 11 hours and 9 minutes left of the readathon. I did start off my morning exactly how I wanted to and that is by reading The Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen. This was about 30-ish pages long and I did like it actually. Yes it is darker than obviously the Disney-fied Little Mermaid but it still ended in a really bittersweet way so I kind of can't see it as dark as what I was expecting it to be actually. Yeah I definitely made this out in my mind to be a lot darker than it actually was but it was great I really really enjoyed this and I do look forward to getting around to some of the other short stories. I definitely just plan to pick this up occasionally when I'm feeling like it rather than what I was trying to do with the Grimm's Fairy Tales which is read it every single day. I really liked this it's a beautiful book as well with all the gold sprayed edges and everything and it was really easy to read from actually. So yeah that was a lovely way to start the day and just get the extra short story in. And then while I was having breakfast this morning I did start the tale of Genji. So I'm on chapter 2 which is page 36 and this first chapter was more just setting up the scene for who Prince Genji actually is. He is the son of the Emperor. The Emperor loved his mother very very dearly but this kind of caused a bit of unrest amongst the society. Annoyance with him for prioritising her over his duties but then she passes away and he is just drowned in sorrow and grief and he takes solace in the fact that he has a son with her which is Prince Genji and talks about how he does doesn't allow him to be in the run-in for being like the emperor so the next in line because of the fact that it would cause so much social unrest and he's just kind of learning all the intricacies of society within court at that time and now Prince Genji is recognised as a man who's gone through what they had back then was a crowning from childhood to boyhood and then boyhood to manhood so he's just reached that point. I would say it's slightly harder to read than Phantom of the Opera but not by much. The writing is very lyrical and lovely, there's little poems and stuff in this as well and there's a lot of like little footnotes just to refer back to what they mean by certain words and just clarifying what would be the social nuances at the time so I enjoy all of that. So I've got 200 pages left of this one to go and and 200 pages of Phantom of the Opera. So we've got 400 pages to try and read today and we have 11 hours to do it in. I do think that is possible to be honest. I mean that would normally take me about six hours and we have 11 so yeah that is 
that's doable. I probably won't read consistently for six hours, but I'm quite pleased. Again, feels like a lot um, slower start than last time, but I think last time it felt like I did so much more because I was reading so many graphic novels, manga, things like that, so they were really, really quick and easy to read. Whereas this time I have two actual short novels to read, so anyway, regardless. It was a good morning. I'm ready to continue. I'm thinking maybe read another chapter or two of this and then we'll change. Right, I should probably stop waffling and actually start reading, really. I really had planned on going and having a picnic at the park again like I did in the last 24 hour readathon. However, it's become so overcast it looks like it's gonna rain. So definitely not doing that. We're just going to do lunch in a moment and chill at home today, I think. Not that I actually mind, I'm actually feeling really lazy today. I'm reading quite slowly, although I will admit I did nap for like 40 minutes. Honestly, I just could not settle last night. As much as I was like, yeah, I'm going to bed at 11, I didn't actually sleep till like half 12 and I woke up so many times it just wasn't a great sleep so the nap really did help um, but that has put me even more behind in this though to be fair we do still have seven hours and 21 minutes to go so it's not that bad we are at 20 to 1 and i have now got to chapter 5 page 100 sometimes these chapters are really really long though i i, I wouldn't mind them being a little bit shorter so far we've learned about genji how he's been kind of dabbling with love really there was this point where chapter two was a conversation between him and some of his friends and they were talking about the women that they've loved but also the problems that they have with women how they need to be this particular way in all honesty what they were listing just sounded so ridiculous because it's just unachievable there is no way that you could have all of these things in one woman and find the middle ground that they're looking for in everything like so i have to admit that was a bit of an eye roll chapter for me because it was just like this is so unachievable. Prince Genji then decides to make up his own mind about these things and so dabbles. He does have a wife but he also dabbles in a few different pursuits of love in different ways. Some with women that he should be leaving alone, one because he's married but also because they're married and you see them exchanging like love letters and things and how one of the women's like no I can't do this, I need to be true to my husband and everything. I character rightly makes the comment that the world is changeable and even more so for a woman and so her being true is the only way that it should be going forward and he does feel bad in a way that he has been pushing out against those boundaries and doing evil. He then has someone that he falls for deeply, isn't someone that for a prince he should be with, um, unfortunately she then passes away and there's also like this slightly supernatural element to it which I really enjoyed that was really quite interesting. It added a nice little atmosphere to it. So we've just kind of finished there. So now we're up to chapter five, which I think is a new point in his life. End of chapter four did wrap up with all these intrigues were safely kept in strict privacy and to have boldly written all the particulars concerning them is to me a matter of pain. And so that's the author addressing us. So yeah, so that seems like the end of that chapter where he was experiencing the different avenues of love. So yeah, this has been really interesting just seeing what society was like at that time, the expectations that they had for women at that time, and Prince Genji just exploring the romances and how they went about it. So that's been quite interesting. There's lots of poetry throughout this, like even more so because of all their love letters and how they converse to one another. And it really is lyrically written, which I think I've already said, but definitely even more so I'm noticing it like there are what just sentences and stuff in here which are just so beautiful and like a lot of imagery is used such as we must not unfurl our sails before the storm is completely over and that's when they're dealing with a certain situation just lots of little things like that just worked really really well so I am enjoying this one but I've decided I'm going to put it down for now because I think at this point where he's now done all of this dabbling and I'm expecting it to go forward in the story I feel like is a good point to put this one down especially as I am at the halfway mark I've got 120 pages left to read on this one so I'm going to put that one down for now I'm going to have some lunch and pick back up the Phantom of the Opera probably try and get 100 pages into that and then swap again that's the plan um, and then I'll finish up this one and then go back to 
Phantom of the Opera. So hopefully I don't get too distracted. I'm feeling really like not able to focus on it. I also want to chill out and watch a bit of YouTube, but I would really like to get these two books read. But I am really intrigued to see where Phantom of the Opera is going and what's going to happen. I feel like the jealousy with Christine at his centre is going to start coming through. With this one I'm not sure what's going to happen because it does talk about how this follows Prince Genji through his many loves and varied passions and I feel like we've done the loves part of it so maybe it's now where he explores his gentle passions as like a musician and a painter and maybe he's going to be exploring more of that. So that's my prediction for this as well. It's been really nice and having a really relaxing day is good but I also feel really guilty that I'm not doing other things like I'm not editing a video or things like that it's really hard which is why I make these days where I purposely don't do anything like that for 24 hours but I still feel guilty feeling like I should be doing something right anyway I'm rambling and I'm hungry so I'm gonna go do lunch <laughs> Okay, so it's now 20 past four. So we have three hours and 42 minutes left to go. And uh, I don't know where I've put my glasses. I took them off somewhere to read. I don't know where they've gone. So hoping that everything is in focus because I can't really tell. But I have read more of Phantom of the Opera. So I now only have about uh, 67 pages left to go of this one. So I think I'm going to put this one down for now. Pick back up Tale of Genji. Potentially finish it or I might just read 50 pages and then come back to this one. I haven't really decided. We'll just see how the feeling takes us. But definitely think four hours is enough to get this done. And I should actually have just enough time that I've potentially finished early early so I could always use that time to start this one. Um, I think I mentioned in an earlier update that it was Christine and Remy for some reason. It's not Remy, it's Raoul. So yeah, I'm not sure why I was saying Remy. Remy is another character in this book. I think it's just because they both begin with R. But yes, it's Christine and Raoul and we're at the point where everything's kind of sparked off between their whole love triangle and Raoul and Christine have made plans to disappear away together and obviously the Phantom did not like that at all. So we're on the last bit, the lead up to Raoul pairing with the Persian get Christine back and everything that's going on with that like it's it's really good I'm really enjoying it I definitely haven't read this one before when I read a book even if it's been years I will remember things as I'm reading it and be like oh yes I remember that happened with this one it's not happening I definitely haven't read it I know I watched the film and I know I read Terry Pratchett's kind of comedic adaptation with his Discworld series of this book uh, but I haven't read the original so yeah really enjoying it really pleased with how far we've gotten we are at the finish line so it is actually 7.46 so we still technically have 17 minutes left on the clock but I've decided to leave it here. I haven't actually eaten dinner yet and I would really like to go and cook some food. <laughs> actually I would rather not have to cook but I'm going to cook and be good and save money. So I thought you know what as I literally just finished Phantom of the Opera I'm going to wrap it up here. I did also finish The Tale of Genji as well. This readathon was a success. I set out to read these two books and I'm really pleased that I did that and I also managed to squeeze in The Little Mermaid as well, which was a nice way to start off the day. I didn't unfortunately read anything of The Lonely Castle and Mirror, but I will continue reading that for the rest of this week. So that's going to be the book of choice. But let's actually talk about these two books. So the first one I finished was The Tale of Genji. This was okay. I found it very slow though, kind of repetitive after a while. So where I last left it, see we had had Genji who had been dallying with lots of women in the kingdom and having honestly lots of scandals <laughs> that he had to try and keep quiet and stuff but he was very much a young person going out enjoying himself setting off to enjoy the world and that is the way he saw it and I thought as you know that that was going to change afterwards it it does it doesn't it doesn't it does because he kidnaps a child so I feel like he just kind of escalated a lot from adultery to kidnapping of a child and then grooming question mark. So that was that was 
a lot. <laughs> I read that chapter and I was a bit like, wait, what? What am I reading? But yes, that, that, that was a point in this. He does, however, when he reaches the tender age of 25, change his ways and goes for a voluntary exile. And while he's exiled, he then learns more about the slower pace of life and thinking about his actions and everything. Although that doesn't actually stop him, he still continues with his deviant ways and enjoys the fairer sex as it's called in this books a heck of a lot. So yeah, this was just a weird one, but I liked the writing itself and the poetry in it is lovely. I can see why it's earned its place as a classic text in the study of poetry, 100%, because there are so many poems in this and they are so beautifully done. The story itself was just very slow. But yeah, those, those were some unexpected twists in that one. I am still really pleased that I read this one. I, it's one of those ones, would I recommend it? I'm not sure. Like if you're interested in obviously the world's earliest novel, the fact that it was written by a woman, there's a lot of talk about that. And even the author says how as a woman, she shouldn't have this much understanding. And for her, it was a bit of a risk to even write about some of the things that she talks about in this. So that was really interesting to read about. And obviously learning about the culture at that time. There's a lot of footnotes, as I think I mentioned already, about just explaining their culture a bit more and the different like festivals and stuff that they do. Because obviously when the author wrote this, she took it for granted that people knew this. So the translator that did this, and even in the first bit of this text, the introduction, it does highlight some of those things, which I think is really good. And it's just interesting for that understanding. But yeah, I'm not sure where I sit with this book. I mean, it was definitely entertaining at times and, and shocking with the whole kidnapping and grooming of a child. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I think it ended just in a way that it wraps up all the individual characters that we have seen and that we've interacted with in some way, but also was just a bit long-winded. I think it could have been paired back a few chapters. And then Phantom of the Opera, I did enjoy this one and I do... <laughs> You can't read this without feeling bad for Eric the Phantom. You just can't do that. It's like the case with like Frankenstein's monster. You can't help but feel for him. In this, it's mainly because at the very end of this text, it kind of makes the point of this whole thing, which is all the Phantom wanted was to be loved for who he was, to be a normal person. But because of his appearance and his ugliness, he was never given that. He was always shunned, he was never allowed to be loved and that's all he wanted and yes it turned him into a very obsessive person but he was one that was just has such genius around him, like a genius with music, but not just with music, with architecture and the way things work and everything. And so the epilogue is a look at Eric's life. And I do think at that point, if you don't feel bad for him, you're going to with that epilogue. It, I think it does a lot of just calling out against society's prejudices in the fact that you have to look a certain way to be credited. Like the fact that he was amazing at all of these things doesn't matter because of the way he looked, which is just unfortunately the way of the world, but frustrating. And I do like it when authors take the time to question that. And obviously this tale of obsession and love and also the ghost story elements popped in, which actually I didn't mention it. Well, I think I mentioned it when I updated, not this time, but previously earlier today, that there are like spirits and demons and things mentioned in there. So that was really interesting as well. And honestly, having both books where it mentions like ghosts or spirits in some sort of way was was quite fun, actually. I didn't think that would happen. But yeah, so it does, it's more of like the social commentary, but with all the other things, which I've been finding with the classic books that I'm reading now is that something that I appreciate is that I can look at the fact that you do have this dramatized story. Also in it is a teaching about society at that time, the prejudices, the things that aren't necessarily right, but doing it in a dramatic way. So it still appeals to the general masses, but just also subtly goes, uh, do you think this is right? And it does. It does does say that right at the end it does call into question like should we feel sorry for Eric should we care about or everything that he's been through is he really the villain in all of this uh, but then also thrown into the point that his choices were still wrong morally great and I like that and then obviously we know my thoughts about the little mermaid I enjoyed that. So yeah, as much as I didn't get as much reading done as I wanted to, I still really enjoyed today. I had a nice time just relaxing, napping, <laughs> but it was definitely needed and that's 
that's the purpose of these 24 hours is just to take a break for 24 hours and just allow myself to do what I enjoy and that is reading and also giving myself um, my body just time to relax instead of going at 1500 miles an hour which I definitely do because I don't stop on my days off I'm always doing something after work I'm editing or before work and stuff like I never give myself a break and so that's what these days every so often force me to do and I hope that you enjoyed it that you took time just to have one day to just rest and relax and not feel bad about it and that is the purpose of these they're not really meant to be like a strict you have to stay up for 24 hours unless you really want to which I would love to do one day I just love my sleep a bit more but it's just for you to enjoy and to not feel guilty about the fact that you're taking a day to just relax and read so that was my intention anyway I will continue to do these bi-monthly I'll let you guys know and if you want to take part then that's great and if not no problem. Anyway, I'm just rambling away, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this, and yeah, let me know if you've taken part or if you've read either of the three books that I've read. Let me know what you think of them. Would you pick them up now? Do they interest you at all? And if you did take part, what did you end up reading? That would be really interesting to know, actually. I know a couple of you were planning to take part, and I'm really intrigued by what you read and what you enjoyed and stuff, so yes also as always if you have any translated books that you think are amazing please let me know in the comments below so i can check those out as well but yes i am starving so i'm gonna go do some food so thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far then let's put a mask emoji because i did finish the day of finishing up phantom of the opera so let's put a mask emoji if you've enjoyed it please do give it that thumbs up subscribe comment to let me know that you're here social media links will be linked below and i will of course Catch you in the next one.